before talking about the X-Frame Options header, it helps to understand some of the problems that we're trying to solve, like clickjacking and cross-frame scripting. With clickjacking, if a site allows itself to be framed by other websites, it may be possible for those other websites to take advantage of its position of having the site contained inside of an iframe element or inside of a frame. For example, the outer site could overlay material on top of the site. And so while normally this would be visible and it would cover up the site, it's possible to set the opacity of form elements and buttons and other things so that even though the material is overlaid, it's invisible and you can see through transparently to the underlying site that's being framed. So it may be possible to trick users into turning over information or clicking on something harmful because the user doesn't realize they're clicking on the invisible item that's over top. They think that they're clicking on what they can see. So we take a look over in Matilda. We can go to the others menu and then go to the clickjacking page. And there's an example here. So if we move the mouse into anywhere within the outer frame site, it generates this giant invisible button that has the opacity set to where it's almost invisible, but there's still enough there that you can see it. And as you can tell, as the mouse moves, it's following. And so it doesn't really matter where the user clicks, they're gonna end up clicking on that button. And this is just a innocent demo and it just takes the user out to the GitHub page. But it still demonstrates the problem. So what do we do about this? Well, there's a couple of different things we can do. And one of them is, is that uh, we can use anti-framing defenses and this will ensure that the browser will not allow our site to be framed by someone else. And there's two different ways to do it. We're in a transition period right now between those two different ways. So X-Frame Options came out a while back and it's still a reliable control and works well to this day. But it technically has been replaced by content security policy. Specifically inside of CSP, there's a feature called Frame Ancestors and it is taking over responsibility from X-Frame Options. It's perfectly safe to issue both headers. The browser will handle the presence of both headers gracefully. There won't be any problem at all. So it's no problem just to double up. With the Frame Ancestors Directive, we're specifying who can frame the site. So we can have values of like none, which means no one can frame it, or self, meaning we can create a frame, but no one else can frame our site. And then, there's an actual uh, feature that allows you to name business partners that are allowed to frame you, but still no one else on the web would be able to do so. And these correspond to X-Frame option settings of deny, same origin, and allow from. The interesting thing about Frame Ancestors is the business partner extension works really well while the allow from feature of X-Frame options wasn't supported as well as we would have liked. So in that way, content security policy does have an advantage over X-Frame options in that the support in the browsers is a lot better and also it is the future, so we should use it given the chance. But we don't want to abandon X-Frame options just yet while we're still in this transition period. Now, if we do an X-Frame options deny, that means no one can frame the content of the site, not even the site itself. And this is fine for a modern site that has moved away from frames and is using styles and layers and newer technologies to display the content. But there are still lots of sites out there that have been using frames for a while, haven't moved away from the frames yet. And so for those, we can use the same origin setting with an X frame options. It allows a domain to frame its own content 
but still prevent other domains from, say, framing that same content. Given the opportunity, certainly use X-Frame Options Deny. That is the standard. Same origin is a compatibility mode, essentially. So back over here to our demo. And we'll take a look at a, a framing page. So there's a page called framer.html, and it'll just frame the Matilde site to give us something to work with. And right now, the site is allowing itself to be framed. But let's take a look at a couple of these headers. So working with the latest copy of Matilda, and also want to note that I have a slight change in my Apache server configuration. Inside of the conf directory is where I keep my configuration files for the headers, headers.conf. Now the way this works is it gets included in the configuration for Matilda. So right in here, if I want to include it, I can just uncomment out these things. I can include my error pages and my headers.conf. And that way I can bring those files in, but without having to come in here and update the actual conf file in a couple different places. So we're gonna go ahead and use that feature. And this is just a nice to have. You certainly don't have to do it this way. We'll start with just making it to where I can use these include files. And there's two places where you have to uncomment this out. One's for the HTTP site running on 80 and the other on the HTTPS site running on 443. And that's why it's nice to have these include files because otherwise you have to put everything in two spots. We got that out of the way. We'll go ahead and make the changes to the headers file. So using these as an example, we have some choices to make. We can use a conditional header, but we can also use a static header. X-Frame Options is gonna be applied to the entire site. So it doesn't really need a condition. The way Matilda works, every single page is hosted inside of a legacy frame. So every page is gonna need the same origin option. It doesn't really matter which page we're talking about. But you can imagine a site that maybe only one page uses a frame. And so that would be a good opportunity to use a conditional header, like a set if empty. So we start out with the header directive. And since we're gonna set it unconditionally, we're gonna use the set statement. And then the, the syntax is X and then frame options. Then we need a value. Like I said, if we use deny, uh, that would be the best practice. It would be the standard. It would be the globally accepted programming practice. But unfortunately, uh, Matilda being a legacy system, it would break the site because it does use frames to frame its own content. So we are going to back down to compatibility mode and, and go with the same origin. We have to restart Apache to see any of these changes. So you can reload or restart, but Apache reads the config when it starts up. All right, so we'll go ahead and browse to this page again. Let's check and see if the header is being set properly. We're going to use the live HTTP headers or HTTP headers live as it's called now. We'll browse to the home page. And if we inspect the response headers, we see there's X frame options, same origin. So now we'll try to set up a scenario where another site is framing the Matilda site. So let's go do that. 
Just use a text editor to create a, a page. So we have an HTML page. It has a body to it. And we want to use an iframe tag and set the source equal to Matilda. And then we'll close the body tag off and close the HTML tag off. I'm going to go ahead and copy the address of Matilda here and make sure I don't get it wrong. Just paste that in there. Save this file. And we'll just save it on our desktop. So we want to open test.html and we'll open it inside of Firefox. Now as you can see, Firefox is unable to frame the Matilde site due to that X-Frame Options header since this domain here doesn't match Matilde.local. However, if we open up the Matilde site, we'll see that Matilde itself is still allowed to frame itself. In fact, we already actually know that because this part of the content here in the main block is inside of a frame that sits uh, next to the left-hand menu. So it's already working, but just to confirm it, we'll go to the framing site. You see, you see the framer site, which is in the Matilde.local domain, is able to frame any content inside of that same domain. If we had set that to X-Frame Options Deny, nothing would be able to frame content from the Matilde domain.